The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, get ready for a special celebration. Relive some of the highlights from 700 Club history. This man is either the greatest visionary I've ever met or he's a crank. <laughs> and wish a happy birthday to the founder and chairman of CBN. Our great friend, Pat. Look at him. Well, let them welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. We're oh. still going strong, and we're delighted you're <laughs> with us, Terry. We're still going strong. This is not just any 700 yeah. Club. This is your 88th birthday. Can't Happy birthday! That. Double eight. Eight is the number of you new beginnings. I'm supposed to begin. And you're getting two of them. <laughs> I'm today, getting so two of them. <laughs> That's right. Anyhow, well, spring supposedly started this week, but don't tell that to people in the Northeast after still another winter storm brought more than a foot of snow. Well, the storm has left thousands of people without power once again and made travel in some areas virtually impossible. Mark Martin has the story. It's being called a four-easter, the fourth nor'easter to pound the northeast in three weeks. The last time the country witnessed this was three decades ago. At that time, it was the middle of winter, not the beginning of spring. This time it comes at the end of a long snowy winter. I'm tired of it. I'm done. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is this is crazy. Give me the summer. Enough. Enough. I surrender. In addition to dumping more than a foot of snow in some areas and forcing millions to dig out from the storm, the latest nor'easter knocked out power to tens of thousands of customers. Just shoveling again here. Again. Yes. I'm a little tired of it. Who can blame him? The major storm led New York and New Jersey to declare states of emergency. The heavy snow and sleet made it treacherous for drivers. It's like there's ice on the bottom and then there's snow on top that makes it extra slick. Authorities reported at least two traffic deaths in New Jersey and on Long Island in New York. There is no reason to be on the roads unless it's an emergency. Tractor trailers were no match for the weather flipping over in Virginia. For more than six hours, the Pennsylvania Turnpike remained closed after a crash in Lancaster County. The Four Easter also affected air travel. Airport authorities canceled more than 4,000 flights Wednesday. We've been here now since about 2.30 about this afternoon. When we got here, I swear it's like the, the cancellation was spontaneous. Like, as soon as we went to go check in, they said, oh, your flight is canceled, your flight is canceled. And it's been tough. Some tried to make the best of it. In the nation's capital, people moved about on their cross-country skis. And some people had a giant snowball fight on the National Mall. The spring snowstorm shut down schools across six states. Some school districts have had so many snow days this year, they're talking about holding classes on Saturdays to prevent the school year from lasting into July. Mark Martin, CBN News. Well, it's snowing. But ladies and gentlemen, Congress said we're not going to shut the government down. Now, now the snow shut it down. They shut the government down. But because of financial questions, they're not going to shut it down because Congress passed a one point three trillion dollar spending bill. Wendy Griffith has that. That's right, Pat. That spending bill is 2,200 pages long, and it contains some things that Republicans want and some things Democrats want. The measure provides a major increase in military spending, something Republicans have said was necessary. Years of cuts and years of uncertainty have hollowed out our armed forces. You just heard the statistics. They're glaring. Aging equipment, personnel shortages, training lapses, maintenance lapses, all of this has cost us. It has hurt us. Last year alone, we lost four times as many service members in accidents and training exercises as we did in combat. But Democrats got increased funding for infrastructure, and there's only a little money for President Trump's border wall. The bill doesn't cut funding for Planned Parenthood, but the measure keeps the government running through the end of September. And I guess, Pat, that's something to be thankful for. Well, I don't know if we're thankful for it or not. I'm sometimes rejoice when the government shuts down. At least they're not passing all these dumb bills. You know, folks, we now have 21, maybe 21.3 trillion dollars in debt in the federal government. 21 trillion. How are we ever going to pay it out? It's going to be a deep, deep hole. 
And somebody said, when you're in the, digging in the hole, you know, stop digging. We do, we're in a hole, and it's getting worse and worse. And this $1.3 trillion, I don't know how much of that's going to kick into the debt, but, you know, it's just like they don't want to reform or entitlements. They, they don't dare touch them. Uh, the Democrats want their deal. The Republicans want theirs, and everybody wants to spend. It doesn't matter. It's like, it's like money grows on trees. It's some... Uh, a uh, genie comes out of a bottle and makes money for you. Oh, but it doesn't work that way. And sooner or later, I guess maybe our children or grandchildren are going to have to pay for this thing, or our country's going to lose its status as a reserve currency, and then it's going to be a tough deal. Please trust me on this one. $21 trillion is an awful lot of money, and we owe it right now. And not to mention the the off-budget things that we owe today is probably uh, three or four times as much as the stated debt. Wendy, give us some money. Do something, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday, Pat. Be happy. All right. Well, the Senate has passed a bill to stop online sex trafficking by a vote of 97 to 2. The measure will let websites be held accountable if they knowingly allow trafficking. Until now, websites behind trafficking were protected by an outdated law called the Communications Decency Act. But critics say that law wasn't intended to be used to protect online activities such as sex trafficking. The new bill now heads to President Trump. Trump for his signature. Well, American pastor Andrew Brunson could spend the rest of his life in a Turkish prison. Brunson has already been locked up for more than 500 days. Until now, he's been held without charges. But last week, a Turkish court approved a 62-count indictment against him. The American Center for Law and Justice, who's helping his Turkish lawyer, says the charges effectively make sharing the gospel an act of terrorism. Turkey has literally taken the position that Christianization is terrorism. So they have no specific evidence that Pastor Brunson committed any crime. The fact um, specifically that he's a Christian and a Christian pastor is what they are equating as terrorism. Pastor Brunson now awaits trial on April 16th, and he's asking believers everywhere to please pray for his freedom. Pat. I want you to know that the president of Turkey has taken that country in a radical uh, shift. Uh, he no longer is trying, you know, uh, the, uh, there was a revolution in Turkey, and it gave freedom, freedom of religion and uh, freedom of speech and all the rest of it. But Erdogan is a left-wing dictator, and he wants to take Turkey in a radical Islamic course. Now, Turkey's supposed to be the anchor of NATO, and they are attacking the Kurds and doing all sorts of things. I think it's time that we put the hammer down on Turkey. I know we've got a base in Israelik, and uh, we, we need them for other things, but I, I mentioned to the president when I was interviewing him some time ago, what do you think about this? Oh, we, we can get another uh, air base. We're talking about uh, one of those uh, uh, Arab countries. But I, I, I think we, we've got to move away from Turkey. And I think NATO's got to understand they can't rely on Turkey. And Erdogan is a, a radical Islamic dictator. And that country, what they've done to that pastor is outrageous. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is not terrorism. It cannot be and should not be and never has been. But that's what they're accusing that man of in that court. Well, you know the court is rigged. Well, Erdogan has, has hollered out the military. He's uh, had a trumped up, uh, a, uh, well, they, they claim it was some sort of an insurrection against him and a plot to overthrow him. And so he purged the military, which was a strong defender of democratic uh, values. And Turkey just can't be counted on. So I, I think uh, the Turks used to be our dear friends, and they were strong fighters, but no longer. Wendy? 
Pat, this week, countless lives may have been saved at a Maryland high school because an officer used his gun to stop a teenage shooter. Many communities are now considering arming teachers as one way to protect students. And one sheriff's department is using a new training tool to teach people how to stop active shooters. Amber Strong has the story. The adrenaline is pumping. Where's he at? Where's he at? The guns are real. Drop the gun! But this isn't the latest school shooting. I got officer down, officer down. It's an active shooter simulator at the Stafford County Sheriff's Department in Virginia. While Washington grapples with the aftermath of the latest school shooting, local police departments have taken matters into their own hands. So let's talk about action versus reaction. 13-year veteran First Sergeant Joe Bice helps lead the training. The guy has a gun. Could you identify him from inside? Because that's the same guy that was in the theater. Dispatch, we got one ran outside, one ran outside. I thought when the one person inside the theater ran out, I thought he was wearing a white shirt. Once inside the simulator, officers like Deputy Dominic Torres you see your hands? face 100 different scenarios with numerous outcomes. Sometimes it's a school. Dispatch men are in the library. Other times, a movie theater. Make sure you give them commands. Let me see your hands! Let me see your hands! Surrounded by sounds and pictures, a vibrating floor, and real guns filled with CO2. We don't have unlimited bullets in real life. If they shoot 18 rounds, if they try to shoot it anymore, they'll just hear a click. It's as close to the real thing as it gets. It's intense. You know, I just, that's a, so two times in a row I did it and my blood's still pumping. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. And, uh, you know, just, it's good training. Drop the gun! That emotion Drop is good. Gun! Vice hopes the program the prepares gun! officers for the Drop worst. It. I've seen people shot before. It's intense. And then it, it, you know, add in children. You know, that's a lot of extra stress on the, the deputy or the officer that's involved that they're going to have to deal with. He also hopes it teaches them how to make tough decisions, like when to avoid lethal force. Stop! Get on your belly! They eventually want civilians to give it a try. So I did. Although nothing compares to real life experience, Bice says he feels better knowing his deputies are arriving to the scene with this kind of preparation. Dispatch, I got shots fired. Shots fired. And the cost of taxpayers? Not a cent, as this was all covered by money seized from illegal drug operations. Amber Strong, CBN News in Stafford County, Virginia. Thanks so much, Amber. Well, the Sheriff's Department tells CBN News they're opening up the facility to officers in surrounding counties and schools as well. Pat? Well, we hope our team will get trained that way. As I told you, we at CBN have uh, officers are all trained, at least the majority of them are trained as police. They're certified as police officers. They actually are certified by the Virginia Beach uh, Police Department. And I think it's important. And of course, do they carry weapons? Yes. Do they, are they armed? Yes. And if something happens, they, they know what to do. But we hope it won't happen. And the best way to avoid something happening is if you have a hardened sight. These terrorists do not go where there's a hardened sight. If they know that there are people with guns on the other side, they won't come in there shooting innocent people. They're cowards, and what they want to do is shoot little girls and people like that who are not armed. But if you have people who are armed on the other side, then you, you, you're much, much safer. Well, and so we want to do that, and I congratulate Stafford County, Virginia. That's just one of many, but other, other municipalities Municipalities need to do the same thing. It's just great. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, coming up, meet the woman who's building a safe home in Texas for the survivors of sex trafficking. I kept saying, why are we not doing this? Um, and then it became, well, then why am I not doing this? Go inside this house of refuge and see how lives are being restored when we come back. Welcome back. You're watching the 700 Club, and we're delighted to have you with us. And this for me is a special day, and I'm just delighted that uh, our staff is so nice to me, and everybody's so nice, and people have been praying, and I appreciate all the, the good wishes. Well, for children who've escaped the horror of human trafficking, 
there aren't many centers that can give them the help they need. But that may soon change in Texas, where a new facility hopes to become a model for the future. Our Heather Sells brings us that story. This shelter is set to open in 2018 and will provide care for 48 children, just a fraction of those who need it here in Texas. The need is overwhelming. Trafficking survivor Tony McKinley will work as a therapist for the refuge when it opens. I can't tell you how many phone calls I get. I just got one a couple of days ago of a, a law enforcement asking me, what do you know that's open? What's available? Where can I take her? As the officer overseeing trafficking cases in Austin, Sergeant Kevin Covington often asks those same questions. There's different things that we can try, but outside of their having the refuge and, and put them on a plane and fly them back home to wherever they're from, it's, it's, there's no real good answer. Just how many children are trafficked here? A new study by the University of Texas puts the number at 79,000. It's a stunning number, considering that national estimates overall reach the tens of thousands. Regardless of the total, however, there's simply not enough beds, let alone treatment facilities for these incredibly wounded kids. And that can feed right into the cycle. The more that we find these kids and don't have a place to put them, a place for them to get healing, um, the more that they're not going to trust us. Meet the mind behind the refuge, Brooke Crowder, who says God downloaded the plans to her. And I kept saying, why are we not doing this? Um, and then it became, well, then why am I not doing this? Right now, Texas has just 20 or so beds for its thousands of survivors. It's hard to believe, but Crowder admits. I think it's just an issue we don't really want to talk about. It's, it's dark. It's hard to hear about. And even harder to do something about. It's a pretty complex uh, response that is required. It's also quite costly. Um, and so it's, it's um, and there's really not a model out there that people can say, okay, we'll build this here. The refuge model keeps the price down. It builds strategic partnerships with those already helping young people. We're not bearing the cost of our on-site charter school. Um, the University of Texas is doing that through their wonderful school program. Uh, we're not bearing the cost of the medical care. We're partnering with a federally qualified health care clinic. There's also help with animal therapy and other services. Each survivor here will receive a customized care plan and likely stay for at least a year, if not longer. Crowder hopes this rural setting will provide both a sense of safety and a feeling of community that will take away any desire to run. McKinley wishes she would have had such an option. Her first trafficking experience came in elementary school. Later, as a teenager, a retired police officer kept her in the trade. I completely trusted him. Um, and I also desired a father figure so bad, like so bad that um, I, I didn't question anything even though I was afraid. Both McKinley and Crowder hope the refuge will give survivors the ability to relearn the very basics of human relationships. Their biggest goal, helping victims release their shame and understand how to trust. The type of people who buy young adults and children are doctors, police officers, um, lawyers, teachers. If you can imagine trying to process hundreds of rapes, you know, hundreds of rapes, because these girls are being raped, you know, 10, 15 times a day, you know, six, seven days a week, some of them for years. That's, it's, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's why it takes so much. That's why so many people don't take this on. They don't build places like this because it's hard. If the refuge can get it right here, they would like to replicate this model in other cities in Texas and eventually in other states, providing care for the thousands of children who so desperately need it. Reporting in Central Texas, Heather Sell, CBN News. Thanks, Heather. You know, the president has mentioned that he'd like to see the death penalty for drug dealers. My thought would be I'd like to see the death penalty for those who traffic in human beings and destroy the hopes and dreams of these young girls. It's just horrible what's happened and how they're abused and, 
and it's tormented and, and uh, they're ruined and often thrown out as diseased many times and they're broken down and nothing, no, no future, no hope. I mean, just imagine it's the type of slavery that uh, we, we just, it, it's got to be the ultimate penalty for anybody who would do that to a fellow human being. Well, if you'd like to find out how you can contribute to building a refuge, you'll find a link in our story on CBNNews.com. Terry. Well, coming up in honor of your birthday, 88th birthday, we're going to take a little trip down memory lane. You got in the ring. I mean, with Slick Evans, right? Yeah, Slick Evans. And he used to beat the living thing like so. <laughs> you danced uh, solid gold. I mean, you had some pretty slick moves, as I recall that show. Yeah, yeah, extremely slick and not very much costume, huh? Thank you for asking me back. It's, it's, a, it's, been, it's, it's been 35 years. I must not have done well. <laughs> More memories from Pat's history as host of the 700 Club coming up after this. Well, welcome back. In case you've just joined us, we're celebrating Pat's 88th birthday today. And right now we have a special birthday greeting for you, Pat. Let's right. take a look. Thank you. Hello, Pat. Hey, Pat. Hey, Pat. Good to see you. How are you, sir? We were supposed to be with you live today, as you know, but we got snowed in in New York City in their fourth nor'easter of the year, and we happen to be in it. So ironically, as fate would have it, we're with you on your birthday again. We celebrated the 80th birthday yeah, in Texas. Texas. Right, right. The 85th birthday. Right on the campus. Freezing cold, as I recall. I think we all did the show in winter coats that day. But here we are, 88th birthday for Pat Robertson, our good friend. We love you, sir. This whole nation loves you. You've been so good to us all of these years, and we love the 700 Club. And thank you for all you do for Jesus all over this nation. We need that. We need that right now. Anyway, we're going to sing happy birthday to Pat. Happy birthday, right Is that there. It? Mm -hmm. happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pat. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pat. Yay. It's not everybody who gets the Oak Ridge Boys. That's to right. Well, they were supposed to be here, you know, know. And, and they got snow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, now we can add that to the years that <laughs> they've come, right? Dear friends, they're wonderful guys. They really, really are right. special. So we thank them. Wish they were here. But Pat, you have hosted a national daily broadcast and cable show longer than anyone on TV. Over the years, we've had a lot of memorable moments. So now, in honor of Pat's birthday, we're going to take a look back at some of the highlights of those years. <laughs> One of the most amazing people in the whole country is our great friend, Pat. Will you come out here, Pat? Look at him. How does somebody who's as nice as you get to be a heavyweight champion? You, you, you knock people down. <laughs> uh, only trying to, to defend myself. You're so sweet to come and be with us. I'm usually sitting at home in my bathrobe watching you. This is fun. <laughs> I love what you did with the boxing. Yeah. Um, you, had a, you got in the ring. You, I mean, with Slick Evans, right? Yeah, Slick Evans. And he used to beat the living thing like that. <laughs> you danced uh, solid gold. Were you one of those uh, dancers that, I mean, you had some pretty slick moves, as I recall that show. Yeah, yeah extremely slick and not very much costume, huh? <laughs> both, both of the above. You had to say that, Robin. No, I wouldn't sorry, have okay. to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> one of those shows I really wasn't supposed to watch. Yeah. But it's my honor to be here. Thank you so much. We, I, I grew up watching the 700 Club. Mr. President, it's a pleasure to have you with us on the 700 Club. Pat, it's good to see you again, sir. Thank you for asking me back. It's, it's, a, it's, been, it's, been, it's been 35 years. I must not have done well. <laughs> You're looking very well and very fit. Well, I feel well and I feel fit, and so do you. You feel great. I think some of the finest moments we've ever had on TV are when you and Alan are battling out some of the, the great moral issues of the day, and you always do a great job. Susan, it's great to have you with us again. I'm so pleased to be talking to you again. I enjoy you so much. You said, I'm going to have, the Lord's told me I'm going to have a Christian network. With lots of stations and then I went out there with you you know to do that program and I said to myself this man is either the greatest visionary I've ever met or he's a crank 
<laughs> There's still people in society who <laughs> aren't quite so. sure. I saw one uh, article that said you had a farm of 200 acres, another that said you had a farm in Virginia of 350, and I want to know which is it. Is it 350 or 200? 300, 360. <laughs> so neither one of them are right. right. That's okay. Aww. You dog. <laughs> We've had several of your dogs on the show. We have. <laughs> we have. That last was Princess Maggie. She is. Uh, she's a, a tough dog. She loves. She loves to kiss you. She, you know, you jump in your lap, and then she's all over. Absolutely. You. Well, that was it. Fun to kind of remember. I, we look at those people. I mean, we're talking about some of the the key figures in the entertainment business and. Mm -hmm on television, and it's just wonderful that the friends that we've had over the years, it's just so nice. Really special. We were just saying a moment ago how it all passes so fast, isn't it? Terry, it's, you know, we talk about a, a, a sleep in the watch in the night. It's just over. Yeah. Your, your life is so fast. And it just seems like yesterday, mm -hmm. some of the stuff when we first started. Yes. And I, I, but to think that we started, I mean, I came down here, I had... I had a wife, I had three children, I had a U-Haul trailer with a few baby beds and stuff in it, and I had $70, and God said, I want you to, to you know, buy a television station. That's and I didn't, what the Lord has I didn't even own a TV set. I mean, yeah. honestly, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know anything about TV. And, uh, but the Lord said, he, he'd do it, and we did it. And th then he said, uh, build a school for my glory, and we built a school that's now Got seven thousand. I mean, eleven, twelve thousand students. I mean, it's huge. And uh, you know, we see Operation Blessing. We started with a little uh, three by five cards and a little uh, a card case. You know, we'd write down the needs of people. Now uh, they they distribute three, four hundred million dollars worth of food and medicine and things like that. So I mean, things have grown dramatically over the years. It's just amazing. One day at a time, right? <laughs> it, it, it is one day at a time. It's been remarkable, a yes, lot of it. It has been remarkable. Well, it's fun for us to look back with you and see what God has done over that time. You know, we've had a lot of fun on this show over the years, but no amount of fun can match the joy that we feel when we pray for you, our viewers, and then you receive an answer to prayer. Here's the story of one viewer, a mother who claimed a word of knowledge that her son desperately needed after doctors had given up all hope for his healing. Ryan Eckie didn't know it, but he was having classic symptoms of acid reflux. When I would eat anything spicy, fun, or not spicy, um, just regular food, it would have the effects. I couldn't keep any food down and felt like just fire and plasma, just burning straight all the way through my throat, kept deteriorating with my situation to where I could only eat maybe three-fourths of a sandwich in one day. At times, he also had trouble breathing. And you just felt like you're gasping for air, like when you're drowning and you're gasping for air, it's like that. And that's just to walk from here to the other side of the room. By the time he saw a doctor, the damage had been done. And then they said, the acid reflux has just deteriorated. Your esophagus almost completely off, around 89% and you're gonna need a tracheotomy within 14 months. That's how you're gonna be able to breathe. Ryan called his mom and they prayed for God's healing. When you go through this, you're thinking, God, I need you. I need you to help me. Jesus, I love you, I trust you, I need a miracle. A few days later, God answered their prayer. I was watching the 700 Club and it came time for prayer. Pat Robertson had this word of knowledge. You burned the inside of your of your throat. It's almost like some of an acid that burned it, and the, the skin is just so raw and, and hurtful. Right now, just put your hand on your throat in the name of Jesus. Touch. I popped my head up and I said, that's for Ryan. I put my hand on my throat, said, Lord, in Jesus' name, yes. We received this. I'm on the phone with her. I'm at work and I just start crying. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus, please let me be this person. When Ryan woke up the next morning, he could feel tingling in his throat. I knew that this was God. From that point on, he could eat anything he wanted with no pain. 
I could walk from my apartment to my car down three flights of stairs, and I wasn't out of breath. Later, Ryan's doctor examined his throat. He said, your esophagus has completely been healed. It's a brand new esophagus. That does not happen. Jesus can do anything. He created this world. He created you. He can heal you. And if you just ask and believe in Jesus Christ's name, if you do that, you're going to win. The creator of the universe can do the impossible, not just for Ryan, but for you. And today we want to take some time to pray for you, to ask God to meet your need. We want to read some more reports to encourage you in your faith before we do that. Well, you know, I didn't know Brian. Ryan, yeah, you Brian, still don't I mean, know him. <laughs> yeah, I still don't know him. God knew him. God saw his throat, heard his prayer. Exactly. Heard. Well, we're dealing with the God of the universe. That's, as Terry said, that's one of the things that is such fun on this program. When we see God move, we're not talking about play acting, folks. We're talking about real life situations, real life healing. And that, that acid reflux was burned, had burned up his esophagus. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and well, very right. young guy well, for what that else to you happen. Got well, this is Mark who lives in Haskell, New Jersey. He had suffered with chronic chest and lung congestion. He was watching this program on March 13th of this year. And Pat, you said somebody has a congestion in your lungs right now. If you would just cough, that congestion is going to leave you. Even as you do it, in the name of Jesus, your lungs are going to be completely healed. Any fungus that's there will be taken out. So Mark moved his hand over his chest and claimed the word of knowledge. He said he felt a circle touch upon his lungs and knew instantly it wasn't something he was controlling. All of a sudden, he realized both sides of his lungs were healed, that God was removing all of the phlegm and congestion. He's so happy and thankful. His throat and lungs are clear, and he can sing again. Praise wow. God. <laughs> well, here's one, Terry. Susie lives in Ventura, California, had been experiencing bronchitis and asthma as a result of the smoke from the Ventura fires. It was so bad it spread to her ear. She was watching this program and you said, there's someone you have a condition in your ear, some kind of a chronic infection that he's just been, uh, he has not been healed. You'll get drainage out of that ear every once in a while, but you're getting to hear your breathing, uh, your, your hearing come back uh, to being crisp and sharp. No more drainage. Susie said, that's for me. And guess what? She's completely healed. Now, listen, folks, on this 88th birthday, I want to tell you that God has touched me and given me a, a new, well, a new, uh, I hardly know what to say. He, he, like, restored my youth. Reinvigorated, yes. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. you know, and I have seen a touch from God in my own life, and I, I've seen it in the lives of thousands of others, thousands. We have thousands of healings in this program. Now, Terry and I are going to join together, and we're going to believe God for you. This is the same God who touches the lives of people, and he wants to touch you. So we'll join together, and I'm praying for you and your whoever you are. Mark, you have emphysema, and you're being healed right now in the name of Jesus. That emphysema is completely gone. Your lungs are free, and you're clear in the name of Jesus. Just take a deep breath, and you're, you're totally healed in Jesus' name. Terry. Yes, someone else, you've aspirated uh, into your lungs something that has really left its mark with scarring and breathing issues. God is clearing that for you right now. Take a deep, deep breath, even as your lungs are restored. A couple of knees. Your knees are really bad. You, you've had arthritis in the knees, and they're swollen. And put your hand on your knees in the name of Jesus. You are totally healed. Mm. There's someone else. You have problems with your feet. It's um, I don't know the cause of it, but they're cracked and broken. You even get bleeding from time to time. So painful. God is healing your feet. Your feet are going to be <laughs> like baby's feet, just brand new. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, receive an answer. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon you. The power. This is the Lord who created everything. Mm. Heaven is my throne and my earth is my footstool. 
There's nothing impossible. And Lord, we thank you for it. And we thank you for keeping me alive all these years. And we thank you for touching the people. And I thank you for Terry. And I thank you for our staff. And I thank you for the partners in the name of Jesus. Now receive an answer right now. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. God bless you. Bless Give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. It's easy to remember. You know, you don't have to search your, your memory. 700 is what this program is. It's 700, 7,000. That's about as easy as you can remember. And <clears throat> call in. Uh, there are people on the phones right now who love you. We want to hear what God has done in your life. Or if you need to have a prayer request, you share that too. Terry. Mm -hmm. Well, still ahead, we've got your email. Judy says, so many people speak of their deceased loved ones watching over them from heaven. Do you think they know what we're doing here on earth? Your questions and honest answers are coming up. And welcome back to the 700 Club. This Palm Sunday, thousands of people are expected to march in Texas for eternal life. First Baptist Church Dallas Pastor Robert Jeffries says people will gather in downtown Dallas Sunday evening. They will boldly proclaim that the ultimate hope for America is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The march comes one day after the march on Washington to end gun violence. To try to solve the violence problem through laws alone is like putting a Band-Aid on a cancerous tumor. You're not dealing with the root problem. We believe what's needed in America to change people's behavior is a change of heart. And that only comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Pastor Jeffries views the march as complementary, not contradictory to the gun control march on Washington. Well, gender neutral names are on the rise for babies. It's a new trend for parents who embrace the possibility of gender fluidity in their children. That's led to names for babies like Royal, Skylar, Salem, Justice, and Oakley. But one expert says some parents are choosing gender neutral names for other reasons. It may just mean something to them personally or they just think it's cool. And you can always get the latest from CBN News by visiting our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of today's 700 Club and this 88th birthday celebration for Pat Robertson right after this. Every morning, Liz, Maxine, and Julie do what you're doing right now. They watch the 700 Club. But these sisters do more than just watch. As CBN partners, they're helping millions of people around the world right from their living room. Drive north of Seattle and take a ferry across the Puget Sound, and you'll find yourself on Whidbey Island enjoying a spectacular view of Mount Rainier. Whidbey Island is home of Coopville, Washington, population 1,500, and home to the inseparable sisters, Liz, Maxine, and Julie. I definitely enjoy my sisters. We enjoy our time. We have birthdays every month, and we all go to lunch. We have a good time. We get together as often as we can. Write down the three prayer requests you'd like to have before God. I love watching the 700 Club every day because I always learn something new. We get up every morning and drink our coffee to watching Pat because it's news that you don't get on the other channels. I just feel that it's more open and truthful. All three are also CBN partners. They're excited about what CBN is doing to spread the gospel. The Lord has told us. Superbook is wonderful because I've noticed in other countries it helps these little children to understand who the Lord is and to be able to accept Him as their Savior. They especially like CBN's Helping the Home Front because it supports military families. I love uh, the new program because we have a military base where we live. So we know a lot of people and what they're going through. All three have followed Terry Mewson's journey as she launched CBN's Orphan's Promise. I would like to be a part of that physically to be able to go when she goes. 
but I can't, so I send money instead to help that cause, and it's very close to my heart. These are just a few reasons Maxine, Julie, and Liz support CBN. CBN does so many wonderful things with the money that is given to them to be able to help people, and that's what it's all about, helping people. What wonderful ladies. Man, I appreciate them. <clears throat> but listen, for those who do just what those ladies are doing, <clears throat> if you give $20 a month, that's just 65 cents a day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we want to send you answered prayer. Uh, you'll find this moving. And Terry, you've got something. Well, I do. This is Joanne who lives uh, in Richmond, Virginia, and she has watched Answered Prayer. It's a DVD. And she says, Pat's a very wise man. Hearing him talk about his life's journey in faith in Answered Prayer was wonderful. And hearing all the great stories from people who had experienced Answered Prayer was faith building. I now know how to pray the way that God, that moves God. And there is a way to pray. There sure is. And you talk about that well, on it's, there. It's so right here. So powerful. Call in and join. 65 cents a day. You can be a partner. You can reach the world. Mm -hmm. That's what's so important. All right. We've got some questions. Well, not yet. I think not we're, yet. are we going to, are we going, oh, we're going, oh, we are. Okay. We're going to go right to All the right. mail. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for keeping me on track, boss. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's what you're here for, right? <laughs> okay. Here's the first question. It comes from Judy, who says, so many people speak of their deceased loved ones watching over them from heaven. Do you think they know what we're doing here on earth? Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't think that, uh, uh, I mean, you really wouldn't want somebody peering into your bedroom, seeing all the things that you do and, and listening to all that. It sounds sweet, but I don't think the Bible teaches any such thing. Uh, we do know about Lazarus and the rich man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I've got brothers and sisters on earth, but he didn't say he's watching them, you know. I think people usually think of that scripture in the New Testament that says, talks about the great cloud of witnesses. Witnesses, there. yeah, but th that's not the same thing as people watching over you. All right. Okay, this is Adam who says, Dear Pat, I just prayed with you. This Sunday I'll be going to church with my wife and kids to be saved and confess to God all my sins. Do I need to confess all I did in the past to the authorities to be fully saved? Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, you, you know, when you come to the Lord, you, you receive Jesus as your Savior. You say, I'm giving you, I'm receiving you, and I take your death on the cross for me. <clears throat> so, uh, you don't have to go confess. Mm -hmm. And I hate to tell you, you don't have to go to church to get saved either. I mean, you say, I'm going to church to get saved. Uh, it doesn't work that way. The minute you receive him in your heart and, and, and ask him to come in and take over, that's when it happens. If, if you want to solidify the, uh, the uh, uh, event uh, by going to church, that's fine, but that's not necessary, all right? Okay, this is Robert. He says, Pat, I was married to the same lady for 48 years. She passed away and I remarried, which ended in divorce. It was my ex-wife's decision to divorce. I did everything biblically that I could to reconcile, but she wouldn't hear of it and filed for divorce. My question is, does this disqualify me from being a deacon? Of course not. I, I really don't think so. I, th I think if anybody holds you accountable, you, you know, John Wesley was a great man of God. And he married this woman who was just uh, made his life miserable. And um, she went away. <laughs> and he said, she went away and I didn't go get her. And I was just as, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just that simple. And I, no, you're not just, I mean, he was anything but a deacon. He headed up the Methodist church, all right? <laughs> okay. This is John who says, I pray every day for others and all in the world. I have handed homeless people money when I've passed by them. I didn't give them much, but all I had on me. I'm a simple man and don't ask for luxury items at all. I have prayed for just a small blessing of money to get caught up on a few bills, and I have no luck. To me, $2,000 is a fortune, and to others, it may just be pocket change. I have nobody to ask for help. How can I get God to hear me? Well, I mean, what do you have in your hand? That's what uh, God asked Moses. What do you got in your hand? I've got a stick. All right, you're going to deliver the people from Israel. Uh, well, I've given you a stick. That's all you need. You got your staff and watch what happens. <clears throat> what are you 
you must have some kind of income. Take a little piece of that income every week and put it aside, and then another time put it aside, and then another time put it aside, and you'll be amazing how that money will grow, and before long you'll have your $2,000, all right? Yeah, this is Josie who says, when we die, do we go straight to heaven or hell, or are we just laid to rest till the coming of Christ? Well, you know, there's some that talk about a purgatory. I don't believe that's true. Uh, Paul said, whether to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better to remain in the flesh for you, there's no in-between. So when you depart, you're with the Lord. Jesus told the thief on the cross, this day you will be with me in paradise. So I think it's you go to be with the Lord. You, now, I, they, there are intermediate steps, I think, when you get to heaven, uh, you know, you're, you're in paradise, but there's, there's more that will come at the resurrection. But we need to get into that. But your spirit will go to be with the Lord, and that's what you're, you're asking me. All right. Well, speaking of more to come, we're going to be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Still ahead, birthday greetings for Pat from all over the globe. Dr. Robson, go hard, baby. Party hard. Happy birthday, man. Come on! Our celebration of Pat's 88th birthday continues after this. here at CBN Europe, including Gizmo, we wish you a very happy, happy birthday. birthday! Thank you once again for touching the nation like India and making it a blessing truly in every form. Dr. Robson, go hard, baby. Party hard. Happy birthday, man. Come on! We praise our God because he has been faithful with you, your family, and your ministry. Happy birthday, Pat, with all our love from Mexico. Feliz cumpleaños, Pat! To the man who inspires us every day, from all of us, Happy Birthday, Pat, from Nashville! Woo! On behalf of our team in CBN Southeast Asia, we wish you a blessed and joyful birthday. We want to wish you all the best in creation. Happy birthday and many more, sir. And from the 700 Club Canada, God bless you. From all of us here at CBN Israel, Happy birthday, Dad! We love you! Happy birthday! Lieber Pat, wir wünschen dir aus Deutschland alles Gute zum Geburtstag. Happy birthday! And we want to say Happy Birthday, Pat! We love you from CBN Cambodia! From all of us at Faith Nation and the DC Bureau, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Pat! Remember, 88 years young, many, many more. We want to wish you a wonderful Happy Birthday! We love you! Because you set the torch ablaze, we run this race from the Philippines to Asia and the world. Happy birthday, Lolo Pat! right for us not to celebrate it in English with just a little bit of That's our right. team here. So join me. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. That's beautiful. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy birthday, dear Pat. Happy birthday to Thank you. you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I can't say we don't know how to celebrate here. Can 
I just more. say. Many, many yes. more. All right. It's so wonderful to have Didi joining us today, yes. too. You two have been on this journey together, and how many people you have blessed along the way. So let me cut the cake. We're going to have some cake here if you're at home. I'm right. so sorry. You might have. Yeah. here. <laughs> That is my new truck. Yeah, woo! Wow. I, have, I have a Chevy Silverado. I'm still young at heart. Well, <laughs> we're, we're, can we just say, we know you gave up the horse for the truck, but we rejoice. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. Well, I, at least for the time being, I've no, given up the no, horse. No, no, no. <laughs> He didn't mean All that. Right. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday, Pat. Thank it's just you. a joy to celebrate. Well, it's so sweet. Not just your 80 years, but what God has done because of your obedience. Amazing. So we rejoice. Sweet. And we thank all of you for being with us. Celebrate with us. Pray for Pat. Pray for Didi. Pay for C CBN and all that God's doing here. We love you and we thank you for joining us today. And now. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay.